Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Trisha at Whispering Pines in Maine. Um, I haven't done a video in a little while. Um, it's been super busy. I started a new job. Um, I'm trying to raise up some show babies, um, and this is one of them. Um, this is Whispering Pines Persephone. She's a little rude Um She is, I think, around... I'm not even sure how old she is now. 10 weeks to maybe 12 weeks. Um, I'd have to look for her birthday. I'm, it's not really important right now. So the purpose of the video that I want to make today um, is to talk about the wool gene. So on a lot of Facebook pages that are focused on lion heads that, um, that people have made, um, which I'm very happy that there's so much interest, um, but there's also a lot of erroneous information that is given on those pages. Um, and one of the things that keeps coming up is the main okay so we're going to talk about single versus double main and we're also going to talk about wool main density um and what makes up a, a main on a lion head and uh what the wool actually is because it drives me crazy when somebody asks hey is my lion head a single or a double main and someone pops up and says oh it's a double main oh it looks just like mine he's a single main no you cannot tell that has, has been posted by experienced breeders over and over. Um, I do have a video on YouTube under Whispering Pines Micro Farm that shows you babies um, that are less than a week old that shows you how you can tell if it's a single or double main during that time. And I will reiterate that that is the only time that you can know if a lion head is a single main or a double main. Persephone here is a double main and it's because um, I she was born here so I know that with my own eyes but I also know the breeders that I got her parents from are very reputable show breeders and the pedigree indicates that both parents are double main. So if you're breeding two double mains together you're going to get a beautiful well, not always a beautiful, um, you're going to get a double maned lion head. However, that doesn't mean it's going to look like Persephone here. Um, there's plenty of crappy looking, poor quality double maned lion heads out there um, because the main gene itself, um, which in genetics um, for lion heads is indicated by um, a capital M, um, is, um, is dominant over any non-maned animals. That's why if you crossbreed a lion head to um, another breed, you can get uh, babies that have some sort of mane. It's because it's a dominant in the world of genetics, okay? So that is why you can get a mane. However, just because a lion head is double mane or a, a, any rabbit has that mane gene in it, it doesn't have anything to do with how much mane that lion head or that rabbit will have and it won't have anything to do with how long it might keep that mane so you you might hear the words junior and senior thrown around a lot you're going to hear the words break thrown around a lot um saddle uh face clearing shedding flank wool mane all those are lion head terminology um that you're going to hear a lot when you're um dealing and reading and learning about lion heads. So we're going to go over that a little bit here today with Persephone. And I actually have, um, just by chance, I have a Jersey Wooly um, baby who is actually the same age as Persephone that I'm going to show you. So I can show you the differences um, in the wools because I know a lot. It's sometimes it's easier to show it than just to read it. And I'm constantly picking at her because she's my show baby and and um, I'm just trying to keep her super clean all the time and she likes to play in her hay and it drives me crazy. But um, so anyway, um, that's why I'm picking at her. So, um, and obviously she's a really good girl. She's just sitting here hanging out with me um, today. So back to the main gene. So main gene is a dominant gene in genetics, not just with lion heads. If you, it, whatever animal you are gonna crossbreed that has the gene, main gene in it, you're gonna get some sort of a main possibly on the mixed breed mutts that come out of it. It doesn't make them a lion head just because it has some semblance of something that somebody might call a mane. Okay, so to recap that, you cannot tell by looking at a lion head if it's single mane or, or double mane. You can only tell that within the first week of birth by seeing the fur V pattern coming down the back over the bum area. Or if you got your um, animals from a reliable, reputable, breeder who who also knows what they're doing and it's marked correctly on the pedigree that's how you're going to know okay so to the wool gene because this drives me crazy 
So somebody will say, oh, how can I get my babies to have more wool or better mane? And then someone pipes up and says, oh, crossbreed them to an Angora or crossbreed them to a Jersey Wooly. Eh, wrong answer, Einsteins. And I'm sorry if I'm being real sarcastic on this video. I try to be nice, but this has gotten me so annoyed and aggravated because people insist that they know what they're talking about. And then when I nicely explain it on Facebook, I'm, I'm, to I'm called a know-it-all. I've got nasty PMs. What makes me know everything? Who do I think I am? Okay, well, I'll tell you where I get my information, which I tell you everything, every time. It's from this book, the North American Lionhead Rabbit Cub Club Official Guidebook. You, too, can have this for, I think, about $15. So for um, maybe not even quite three lattes from Starbucks, you, can, you, too, can be educated and know what you're talking about. So... This is where I'm getting my information, but I also do other resource information, okay? I don't just Google. Google is not your friend when it comes to lion heads. There's far more erroneous information on, on the internet about lion heads than there is actual. So please go to the correct source, and that source is the North American Lion Head Rabbit Club, and you can find the website at lionhead.us. That's how you find the website and you can join. Even if you don't want to be a breeder, just so you have the accurate information so that you know when somebody is commenting whether they're, they know what they're talking about or they're just pulling stuff out of a hat. And I'm trying to be nice saying it that way. So back to the wool. Okay, so the wool gene that makes up this mane is not a wool gene that you're gonna find on an Angora or a Jersey Wooly. And what happens and what we have now um, in the lion head world we have the uh, lion heads that we call teddies that pop up. And what that means is, is that they don't shed out ever. So how, you can see how Persephone is starting to shed out her saddle here. This is all baby wool, okay? This all goes away, all right? She's gonna shed all of this out and she's also gonna get what's known as a break. So behind her, behind her mane, she's getting annoyed with me her mane this is all going to disappear this is all going to go away this fur as she grows it's going to break that's a break okay this is important when you're showing because if they do not have that break they will be dq'd disqualified right off the table okay you have to have that clean break on both sides behind the mane so this is all going to go away as she sheds out now my lines that I work with tend to shed out later than some other lines and I can actually show you an example of that right now. So here's a baby. I'm going to show you this little baby. This baby's only nine weeks old, okay? And she's already shedding out, okay? I don't know if, yeah, you can clearly see. Too young, okay? Now her bro her litter mates, her two sisters, is a roux and a blue tort. Beautiful. Still very, very fluffy, not showing any signs of shedding clearing of the face or shutting out in the saddle she this little baby's almost got a break but I'm not keeping her I'm gonna offer her as a pet because for me in the show world this is way too soon for this business to be going on for me I don't like it at all so I um, because I know that when she gets older as a senior it's probably not going to come back very full she's not gonna have any kind of senior career and I don't want this in my herd I don't want this this is her sister look at the difference fluff ball not showing any signs of shedding out any signs of anything i don't know if persephone is you're being awful good mamas um you can see she's her face is still very fluffy very very fluffy no signs of breaking or shedding or anything she's definitely a keeper this is a future show baby here this same litter pet quality okay from the show standpoint um too too way too soon for this business to be going on okay so Sorry, I think I got sidetracked a little bit from what I actually wanted to keep this focus on. But um, it's just so much information and it's just easier to talk about it rather than type and type and type. And um, people don't read it anyway. They read two seconds of it and then they form an opinion. So having said that and shown you that, you can see the difference between what I'm talking about. So she is um, right on track where I want her to be. I'm hoping that she actually finishes this in a couple weeks because I do have a show on the 22nd. But if she doesn't, you know what? I have to be patient. This breed is not for the faint of heart and this breed requires much, much patience. We do have incidences of people who pluck 
which is horrifically unethical and um, we know who you are by the way if you're watching this video and also I was just at a show yesterday um, where one of my other does um, actually got a leg um, yesterday she got a best opposite of breed which I was very happy because she's a senior and she actually has already had babies and she doesn't have much mane left because they pull it um, and it takes a long time for it to come back if it's going to come back at all um, but she still she still was so great that she that she won but um I actually got to have lunch with one of the judges and he's a very experienced lion head judge a national judge he's also actually one of the first judges in the country to give a best in show to a lion head um, shout out to Silver Bluff um, Miss Barbara down south very very proud that that happened congratulations and um, he actually told me of a story me and another fellow lionhead breeder um, that he actually saw somebody cutting with scissors the break um, at the show and he actually said to them you know I'm a judge right but okay people <coughs> stop being crazy with the lion head business okay <coughs> sorry my voice might give out on me I, I was up at 3 a.m. yesterday getting ready to go to that show and got home very late as a result so anyway be patient it will happen okay she's gonna be lovely she's gonna break she's gonna be gorgeous I just have to be patient okay there's no instant gratification with lion heads okay so now I'm going to show you the difference between the wool um, as I was talking about so I um, Nikki defer has future hearts rabbitry um, and she's here in Maine with me she went to uh, the mini convention in Ohio this weekend and she asked me if I would take this little baby for her down to the show I was going to Woo, fluff ball um, hay stuck in it uh, I was going to a show in Massachusetts and she wanted um, the judge's opinion on this baby this baby uh, Jersey Wooly um, whose name is Vegas lights um, and she wanted um, the judge's opinion she also wanted a fellow Jersey Wooler uh, Jersey Wooly breeders opinion on it um, of this baby now this baby I don't know much about lion uh, Jersey Woolies but um, I actually fell in love with her and I, I actually threatened to keep her the judge loved her said as a baby she was super impressive he wants to see her again in three months um, and that she definitely needs to hold on to this little girl um, so uh, awesome future things to happening with this baby Jersey Wooly my point of having her um, here today before I have to return her um, to Nikki is that I want to show you the difference this is real wool okay this is wool that can be this is fiber wool this can be um, used to uh, spin and make sweaters okay this wool is not the same okay I don't know if you can see Persephone this wool is not the same as this wool I don't know how to explain it except if you're making a cake and somebody gives you the recipe and you decide to you know put in eggs instead of butter you're not going to get the same cake as I don't know how to explain it really um, so this is not the same and mixing this is all you're going to get are teddy lion heads you're not going and it's not going to be a lion head it's going to be a cross breed mixed breed mutt that somebody is going to offer you as a lion head and because you didn't do your research you're going to um, get taken because that those babies are never going to shed out and have a break in a mane um, uh, like Persephone is here because they're going to look like this only they're going to have a lion head type head and maybe more open ears like a lion head but they're always going to have wool because this wool is not the same as this wool okay not the same okay eggs and butter I, that's the only thing I can think of I don't even know how to how to really explain it so the wool gene that um, little uh, this little girl has I don't even remember her name now um, Vegas lights has is a wool gene I'm trying to explain it genetic wise I don't want to go into a whole big scientific um, uh, explanation here because I'm really not that nerdy um, I just know what I know in my head and know what to do and not to do but I want to be able to explain it so that it can be understood so the wool gene that she has will have they have fur all over their um, their body okay and while babies like the baby I showed you before has this little fluffy wool all over her body as you can see all right 
it's going to go away because this is a baby coat. It's not true wool like um, Vegas over here has, okay? It's not the same. This is her baby coat. This is real fiber wool, okay? All right. So if it... Um, and also, the other thing is that she didn't start out like this. I don't have a baby. She didn't start out with this fluffy wool like this baby is starting out, okay? So she's going to have this her whole life, all right? But, of course, the baby's going to shed out because she's a lion head. All right, so the wool... So, again, this, this wool that Vegas has has nothing to do with the wool that is making up Persephone's mane and flank wool back here, okay? Two different things, eggs and butter, okay? You cannot substitute one for the other in a cake and get the same cake, all right? So, to reiterate, breeding the wool gene, breeding this wool gene into a lion head will not result in getting any bigger or dense manes, okay? You will wind up with teddy lion heads, which are not even really lion heads, okay? They're just... They're just mutts. Um, so, the, and the other thing that you want to remember that is if you do a breeding, say you, you know, you get a, a pair, you want to breed lion heads, and you wind up with a teddy, it's recessive, okay? And what that means is that both your sire and your dam both carry that gene, and you need to not breed either one of them to anything again, okay? You need to pet them out um, or call them whatever your. Um, for me, calling with lion heads means petting them out. Um, and But, you know, some breeders are more serious about that than I am. So whatever you need to do to protect your herd, please do it. But please do not breed them together again. Okay? So, um, I hope that this helps. I hope I didn't come across as too harsh or crazy or sarcastic. I just want people to stop perpetuating these crazy ideas for this breed this breed is a difficult breed as it is when you go to shows and you hear the judges comments and you know and you and you see what's going on and you see what other people are, are doing with the breed that people have worked so hard to get it to this point where we have beautiful gorgeous little lion heads um, and then they turn around and want to mix it. There's nothing wrong with this Jersey Wooly. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous representation of a Jersey Wooly. But she's her own breed, and Persephone is her own breed. Please do not mix them, okay? You are not doing anything but making a fool out of yourself. If you think you're smarter than everybody else, you think you're smarter than genetics, and that you're going to make something fabulous out of something that's not, okay? So, that is my spiel on... Um, the wool gene. I hope it made some sense. I'm sure some people are going to be upset by the video. I always get responses. Um, and by the way, Jersey Woolies are not a breed that if you don't want to groom, do not get them. Okay, they're adorable, but oh my God, you have to groom them. So, <laughs> which is a little bit different from the lion that they don't require as much grooming. But they are gorgeous. They actually are a breed that I considered um, for a long time and I probably will eventually get into them um, once my boys get older um, because they, they are just a wonderful breed. So I hope, I hope, hope, hope that that clears up, um, clears up some of the misconception regarding the wool issue with the lion heads. So wool is not the same as mane wool. Very different things, okay? And um, I don't know how else to say it. And if you do your research, please do your research. Learn the genetics of it. Figure it all out. It, my head spins with that stuff. I research it so that I know it and understand it. But I certainly wouldn't want to have to teach it. Um, and again, if you want the information, please just spend, I, like I said, I think it's $15, and get your guidebook. It's a very thick, thick guidebook. It's one of the thickest of any breed of guidebooks that I've ever had. And I belong to a few breed clubs. So please do yourself a favor and just get the information so that you know and you're not having to ask on Facebook, which is like the worst place to get your information. Um, and then you're listening to all these people who don't know what they're talking about answering you and you don't know who to believe. You know, Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, my word. Okay, listen, you. Okay, so I'm going to get these guys put back, obviously, because they're getting rambunctious. Um, well, she is anyway. Um, she's just such a cute baby. All right, well, I hope everyone has a great rest of the, their weekend. Well, it's Monday. It's part of my weekend. I don't work on Mondays. Um, and I hope that you learned something today. And uh, thank you for watching, as usual. If you have any questions or concerns, send me a comment um, or 
uh, on my page. You can PM me on my page or write a comment on my page at Whispering Pines Micro Farm on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, Miss Whispering Pines Micro Farm um, has its own channel. And um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it helps. Okay, thanks everyone and um, have a fun summer. Bye bye.